The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below. So obviously the charity that we're raising money for is Sporting Minds UK and it's all about mental health. So Ryan and Luke, I thought I would keep you around for a little bit just to have a little bit of a chat about mental health in football, mental health in sport. Um, obviously, lockdown was really difficult for all of us. Um, us three in particular definitely got to know each other and became a little bit of a, a weekend thing to look forward to. Um, but Luke, I'll start with you. How important do you think talking about mental health in football is, not just for athletes, but also for supporters? Well, you touched on athletes there, and I think it's only fitting really that um, we talk about this on a day that Simone Biles has openly come out and, and had to pull out from a major competition in the Olympics uh, due to her mental health. Uh, and it affects everyone. Um, mental health um, and mental illness, obviously, as, as, as we know, are sort of two different things, but, um, but both are very much interlinked. And mental health um, is, is something that we've all got to be aware of. We've all got to look after our own health, whether that be physical, whether that be mental, and it's going to affect us all at some point, um, whether we're an athlete or whether we're, you know, a supporter of a football club. And um, I was doing a little bit of reading myself into sort of mental health in, in footballers in particular. And uh, and you look at, obviously, the, the tragic events with, with the likes of Gary Speed, Robert Enker, um, big profile um, names in football that sadly lost their lives to depression. Um, and you can go as far back, actually, and, and it's frightening, really, um, that in the 30s and 50s, um, there were Scottish footballers that actually lost their lives to, to depression and took their own lives, which is is so sad. But, I mean, the, the positive that we can take from this now is that we are speaking about it and, and it's not got the same taboo. And um, you've only got to look at, as Rovers fans, we can we can sit there and we can be so proud of of one of our own in Tyrese Dolan and everything that he's done for his his good pal Jeremy Whiston and and now he's trying to bring everything now to the forefront and uh, get people talking about mental health and uh, I'm really proud of what we did as a channel over last year and there was many people getting involved sending us messages um, you know showing gratitude and saying thanks and just getting in touch with us really for a chat and. Um, to say, you know, you've done wonders for me. You've you've given me an outlet to watch football again, and you know, get to know people, meet some friends, and uh, it's really nice to hear that. And if all of us can sort of get involved and with the likes of Sporting Minds UK, um, think a little bit more about mental health and and the impact on everyone around us, then uh, the world might be a nicer place for people that are struggling. Yeah, and it's um, you know, it's not a conversation that you want to start gendering, um, but obviously um, there is a conversation about gender with mental health. In 2017, nearly 6,000 suicides were recorded in Great Britain. Of those, 75% were male. Obviously, uh, football and football stadiums, and of course, first team football uh, in this country is is quite male dominated in general. Um, and there's obviously a conversation to be had about the way that males um, deal with issues like this and the fact that a lot of men don't feel free to talk. Uh, and whilst you don't want to exclude, obviously, women from this conversation, um, I think it is important that we acknowledge that this is an issue um, amongst men, amongst young men. Um, obviously, us guys, we're all men, young men. Um, although I, I think I'm the youngest. Speak yourself, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry, you're still both young. Um, and I think it's important. Ryan, is it important that as men we, we speak up for men um, and, and offer support, especially to those that might not feel comfortable asking for it? Absolutely, Joe. And just to kind of hook back into what you were saying there about not exclu uh, excluding women and, and things like that, actually, you know, men talking about their mental health, all of the activism around LGBT and uh, equality for women and all of that. These are all really important movements and important things that need to happen in the 21st century. Um, so to answer your question, it's absolutely important that we break down that stereotype that 
men have to be macho, men can't have emotions, men can't be depressed, men can't be this, alongside all of those other things that I've said. So I'm really fortunate to work for a fantastic employer. I work in the civil service. I won't say who I work for, but I work in the civil service. And the organization I work for has really trailblazed mental health over the last really 10 years in the whole time that I've worked there, probably ahead of the curve alongside some other organizations. And I've had many a conversation with either people in my office, people in different offices, people over the airwaves, people over emails, people that are struggling at different points in their life. It's been so important to do that. So I think the main thing that you know I take from all of this is, yes, we're all going to go to the football and have a sing song and have some beers and be macho and be men and all of that. But it only takes one thing in your life to destabilize and decouple just to tip the balance in the other direction. And for me personally, I've probably had two big things in my life. Um, you know, my grandparents I was very close to uh, before they died. That was tough when they died. And that was something that tipped my balance the other way. And I got a hell of a lot out of my friendship group, uh, friendship group, my partner, whoever. And I just spoke to them about that. And I remember on one night out, I physically broke down. You know, I broke down in front of my friends. And I think that that could have been a really difficult and different situation had they not been there at that point. Who knows what I might have done? So I'm pleased that they were there. I could talk it through. I could talk through how I was feeling at that point and just get myself back up. And then I think the second thing, the pandemic, you know, just I've got children and just the whole kind of goldfish bowl life that we all lived when we're in lockdown and having to do everything under the same roof. That was difficult. And it was this Rover's chat stuff was my release. You know, I'm in this garage. People know I'm in this garage on these live streams, but this is my escape. And talking to all of you guys is my escape from trying to be a father and be someone who's working and be a partner all under that same roof, all in the same house. So really, really important that we talk, Joe. And every mental health initiative that we see, the key thing is talking. So just we stress to everyone here, whether it's a DM on Twitter, whether it's a WhatsApp number, if you've got someone's phone number, whether it's an email, whether it's a tweet, however you reach out, any of those mediums is absolutely the way that we've got to do it. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think on the, on the topic of talking, something that I really wanted to do tonight, which we're going to do now um, with everybody that's with us, and there are a lot of people watching um, and a lot of Blackburn fans watching, um, to bring it back round to Rovers, um, you know, personally, um, I used to go to all of the games with my dad, my first season ticket with, with my dad. Um, my dad passed away in 2017 and I found it really tough getting back to the games and going through a new process. We've all experienced a loss over the last two years, not a loss of a person, but we've all experienced a loss of our normal way of life. And no no one has been to Ewood Park for a long time. Um, and I think that everybody will have something that they are nervous about, anxious about, worried about. Um, so, you know, get in the comments and let us know. Are you going to the game tomorrow? Are you finding it a weird feeling to be going back? Um, and, you know... We've had plenty of comments in already, so do send us in your stories and send us in your thoughts and tell us how you're feeling um, because it can be difficult. And I'm certainly um, not looking forward to having to find a new way of watching Rovers again uh, and getting back into new patterns. Um, Luke, are, are you kind of apprehensive about that first game and how that's going to feel and everything being different again? Yeah, so um, I actually, I, I was home in um I've been really quiet i mean it bring it brings it home when you hear about people you know close by now that are being affected still by covid and yeah everyone's got their own opinions on what they're going to do with the mass wearing are they not don't want to get into the politics of it but that's just it um a lot of people now particularly the older generation of of people will be going back to football and they'll they'll be finding it really quite difficult and uh, as you said joe e even us guys are going to have a very different way of experiencing football so only today did i um did I actually buy my season ticket? And I'm now just trying to trying to look forward to it. And uh, I am looking forward to getting football back, absolutely. Uh, and like you say, it's going to be a, a different way of enjoying it, um, a different way of getting back into it. But I think if we do talk um, and we do, you know, 
speak to others if we do have concerns and if we just reach out where and when we can. Uh, hopefully we can all come together and enjoy the experience in the, in the very best way possible. And uh, if Rovers can have a successful season, it makes it all easier for us anyway. Uh, so that's the main thing. Uh, let's let's watch some football and then enjoy it. But yeah, it's going to be very different. Um, we've just got to we've just got to sort of get by together uh, as a community and as Rovers fans uh, and as football fans all over the world. Um, everyone's going to be in a very similar situation come the first and second weeks in August. And Ryan, I certainly like to think that as a channel, we've provided a platform to allow that conversation and to help other people. Um, and we've spoken privately and publicly about how much this channel was helpful to us in being able to continue to enjoy football without being able to be there. Um, you know, have you, have you got any advice, Ryan, yourself? I know that, you know, you've been to games before on your own because um, you don't live right near to Rovers and travelled. And have you got any advice for anyone that might be feeling apprehensive about getting back to the football, might be struggling with uh, with thoughts in that way? I think the one thing that the way I've always lived my life, Joe, is, and I, I hope that this pandemic has taught us all about it, you know, all the things that we had robbed from us. Uh, at the end of the day, we're all human beings. And, you know, that is all of us at our core. Some of us are fathers, some of us are brothers, some of us are grandparents, some of us support Blackburn, some of us support Burnley, whatever, whatever. We're all human beings at the end of the day. And I think if you live your life being a good human being, then you won't go far wrong. So when I've been, I've been to away games on my own and felt nervous that under my coat, I've got the shirt underneath. But do you know what? I don't go to those away games and think I'm going to cause some trouble with some Millwall fans or I'm going to cause some trouble with some Middlesbrough fans or I'm going to cause trouble with some Blackburn fans. We see our own fans fight with each other sometimes. I go to enjoy the game and if I come across people, I'll talk to them. And usually how, you know, if you do get talking to someone, Nine times out of 10, 99 times out of 100, that person will talk to you back. And if you're a civilized, decent human being, you will have a civilized, decent human conversation. So that would be my advice first and foremost to anyone if they are thinking of going alone. But of course, I realize that that is a completely daunting experience. So what I will say at this point is if anyone does ever want to go to a Rovers game, and I'm sure all the Rovers chat lads will say, hit me a DM, you know, if I'm traveling that way or whatever, and I am going on my own, I'll happily go with someone, you know, at the end of the day, I, I like to think that people have seen enough of me over these streams that what you see is what you get. And how I am on these streams <laughs> is how I'll be in the stands and how I'll be in the pub and how I am at no, work. It's, you know, it's not true. Thing. He's a diva behind the scenes, guys. <laughs> he's he's <joking. laughs> But that, that's my oh. main advice, Joe, if people are just good human beings, and I think we can apply that to all facets of life. And that's the bit I want the pandemic to teach us that, you know, behind the NHS, these are all human beings who are treating everyone in those hospitals. Behind all the schools that have been in and out and in and out, these teachers are human beings. Behind all the police that are having to deal with all the riots, they are human beings. You know, that's the bit we all need to remember at our core. And if some of these human beings at different points in their life, you know, what we're discussing today, men's mental health, if some men, some human being men are struggling at certain points, let's talk to them as human beings. That's that's the advice for me, Joe. Uh, just a quick thank you to David Stewart, who's used the super chat function to donate uh, 999 and that will go towards the tally. All of that will go towards Sporting Minds UK. I'm uh, just so. laughing at Piccadilly. It's, uh... It's hot in this garage, Piccadilly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he's ridiculous. You want to see his expenses, all these lunches <laughs> he's going on. <laughs> uh, and I like this as well. I keep things light and say, Ryan calling a Burnley fan human is the highest compliment a Burnley fan can get. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Um, and Luke, just, just from you as well, um, you know, it, it might not be that there's a particular piece of advice, but... Is there anything else you want to add to this conversation? Is there anything you would say to anybody that's a little bit apprehensive about getting back to the football, perhaps struggling with their mental health at the moment? I think we've uh, we've touched upon it. We've stressed it. We've we've tried to highlight as much as we can. But talk, it's, it 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 sounds simple, but for a lot of people, it's very very difficult to reach out and to to speak to people uh, when you in that situation uh, and when you're struggling, um, when you're apprehensive and anxious, uh, you, 
you might not be, you know, you might not find it that easy to do that. But like Ryan said, we're all human beings. Uh, and I like to think that certainly us guys at the Rovers chat are all good human beings, uh, nice enough guys, don't take ourselves too seriously. And uh, we're very approachable. Um, so we're all happy to, uh, to you know, be a shoulder to, to cry on even, an ear to listen. Uh, and we'll always be there uh, at Rovers games. At least one of us uh, is going to be there or thereabouts, whether it be home, whether it be away, we'll, we'll all be there. Um, and if you if you reach out to us as, as a channel and as people, um, we, you know, we'll do our very best to, to make life and make football and make everything that comes with it a little bit easier um, uh, for you as, as people and as human beings, as Ryan said. Absolutely. And I think we'll end things on a really positive note that obviously we're back at Ewood tomorrow for those of us that can get there. Um, the season's coming and, you know, forget about on the field and whether we'll finish sixth or, or 21st. Um, you know, getting back to Ewood is a positive thing in general for most of our mental health. Yeah. Maybe not heart conditions, um, but in general, it's a good thing. And I'm certainly looking forward to getting back there tomorrow. And it'll be great to see some friendly faces. And I'm sure Luke will say the same, you know, and, and Ryan, you see us, um, come and say hello, you know, have a chat. I mean, don't throw abuse our way. Um, but come and say hello. We'll happily have a conversation and chat I mean, get about the, Rovers. Get and... the away end at foul bouncing with the 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 Rovers <laughs> analytics. Yeah. yeah, that was a little bit embarrassing, but uh, yeah, Sam Wright definitely uh, definitely will be off a bit there. So if you yet to donate, you can donate via rcdonate.com. It's all for a great cause. The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below.